Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. You made it through another week. And um, I guess by now you're pretty tired of me because uh, I had two videos out on Wednesday. It's just a lot going on. But uh, we're going to continue today with the uh, $40 haul, which is amazing, isn't it? I got all these tools for $40 at the uh, Colchester Zagre show. So uh, let's move on to another project that I can't wait to get to and uh, my thoughts behind it. Let's get right to it. Okay, so here is our beautiful purchase. One of my best purchases, hopefully, that I got. This is a Kalamazoo 1x30 belt sander. You could see here, here's where the belt wraps around this pulley here. You can see it's a metal pulley. Bearing still looks good. This a little flap that goes over the belt. And uh, Kalamazoo Industries, you've seen these before. A few people have them, but look, a little bit of rust on here, but that's the pulley where the belt goes around. And uh, over here, it has a open uh, area that you could put a, uh, a wire brush or whatever you want, a regular discs. Now, uh, when I bought this, I, I saw the guy. First of all, he didn't have any prices. You always got to be careful when people don't put prices on things. So you, you you feel them out. You pick an item and you say how much for that. If it's expensive, you just walk away because you know all this stuff's going to be expensive. So I saw this day. I was looking. I was spinning it, you know. And uh, the guy goes, I think that's for a uh, like a knife making or something, you know. And I, I, I obviously he was uh, assuming that I had no idea what it was. And I said, yeah, I said, I think it's one of them, uh, one by 30 belt sands. I've always wanted one of these, but they're quite expensive. You know, they're big money, but it's all USA made and it's a beautiful, I believe it's, it might be a Baldor motor. It's just a real nice thing. And so you, first thing you do is you spin it. You look for any bends in the shaft. Okay. The shaft runs true and free. Excellent. Right. Uh, so you know, the motor's most likely good, but then you look at the cord. Now the cord here was probably hooked up into something, but it wasn't cut. Now, sometimes if you see this cut, that's a, uh, a you know, an indication that they were trying to get it out of there or could have been found or something. You got to be careful when they cut, you know, you don't know why it was cut, but when you see it like this, that it was, it was hooked into something. It's a good, I'm, I'm assuming that this runs. The switch is good. It moves free. I'm assuming it runs. So I said, he said, 10 bucks. I was like, 10 bucks, $10. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Of course, $10. So I bought it. Let me show you what okay, my you plans. know, when I go on my uh, midnight walks, the poor man's flea market, whenever I see a, a nice appliance that has a nice plug on it, I use my channel locks, I clip it off, and this is a perfect cord for this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hook it up, see if it runs, which I'm, I'm kind of assuming it does, and then we'll go working on the rest of it. So let's do a quick okay, test. Okay, we soldered the new uh, wire on. Again, we put the heat shrink on before we soldered it. Made that mistake a couple times. And uh, we're going to tape these individually, put the heat shrink on, and seal it up. Individually taped up. Now we'll tape one more wrap around everything and then put the heat shrink okay, on. Okay, here we have our cord repair. If you only have a heat gun for one item, it should be to, to put heat shrink on. Because nothing does heat shrink better than a heat gun. Okay, let's. Uh, we plugged it in. Let's give it a shot. Absolutely smooth and perfect. Now, we do have some rust on the shaft, so uh, the best way to do it is take a hand wire brush, turn it on, and let the, uh, the shaft spinning do the work. Okay, you see how that uh, that cleaned up nicely here. We will go over it again, but uh, we'll do the other side too. It's uh, again a rewarding operation, especially when you uh, when you have the brush, the motor doing it. You can see here that that the surface rust comes right off. Just give it a little pulling, and uh, and we'll finish this off. Okay, we're all finished up here. Uh, the one thing I realized is this isn't a, it's a 1x42 belt, I believe. It's not a 1x30, so I, I got to pick up a couple 42 inch belts. But I want to show you something. I put the uh, a larger wire brush on, but I, I took it off because I don't want, 
when you're dealing with a wire brush or with a sanding over here, the last thing you want is something over here, spitting wire or whatever. So I put on my, my used one, just an emergency, just to have something to hold up on that spindle. But uh, you can listen to how smooth it is. Now that's the difference between a really good uh, uh, belt sander and a brush motor like the Harbor Freight one I have that, that uses a brush motor. It's three or four times as loud. This thing is whisper quiet. The other thing is to uh, to put the belt on. You could see over here. This was uh, the shaft was rusted up. I cleaned everything up, cleaned up the pulley. Everything's nice. So what you do is you put the pulley around here, and then you just push down straight. It's spring loaded. There's a big spring in here, and that keeps the tension on there. So we'll get some uh, belts, order them up now, and we'll demonstrate it. But uh, how nice is that for ten dollars? Okay, so up here we have what's called the idler wheel. And you can see it's a ball bearing wheel that spins up there. And down here we have what's known as the drive wheel. The drive wheel here along with the platen and the shelf is missing, which I don't mind. I usually take the platen and shelf off. However, I do need the drive wheel. Now I went to the Baldor, uh, the Kalamazoo website and they do have the replacement drive wheel, but it's $50. And you know something, when you buy a $10 unit to spend fifty dollars on a drive wheel just and then t shipping is going to be another 15 so you know you're looking at 65 dollars it brings the price up to seven i can't do it so i went on you on uh, amazon and i got a couple wheels that i'm going to adapt hopefully myself now, the first thing we're gonna have to do is try and remove this piece on here because uh i'm sure the wheels i can make a sleeve but we got to remove this old sleeve this is the inside and you can see it had a set screw that would hold it but this has to come off now there's a couple ways to do it. now years ago at harbor freight i bought one of these three jaw puller sets and this is i'm telling you you don't use these often but when you need them you got to get a set of these they're they're cheap at harbor freight they have a lifetime warranty and i'm nine times out of ten they're strong enough to do whatever work you're going to do let me show you how we're going to use that to take off that little shaft. Now, how these work is you would take these uh, three, it comes usually three like this, and they would wrap around the back here like that. You would put the jaws on here, and then you would put the center piece here and pull it off. The problem is I don't have a lot of room between the back plate and the back of this shaft, and it won't fit. You can see now uh these are fantastic but for this opportunity it won't work so what i have to do is i have to custom make something to pull this shaft off. now the first thing you want to do is identify now like i said this is on there now you might want to try and wedge something between here and pull it off that's that's a mistake because it's always going to wind up you can mess up the shaft that runs through the motor you can mess up the threads it's a, you got to be careful with this now the first thing you want to do is identify these threads okay now um i have these thread checkers that have come in so handy i mean you could do it a bunch of different ways but the easiest way to do it is to match up a thread that looks close like this one here and here's the female and we'll try it out this is a half inch by 20 a common thread and you could see that is the thread size for that half by 20 so we're going to put a nut on there just to protect the threads then what we're going to do is we're going to make a homemade gear puller and to do that we're going to take a couple of of uh carriage bolts like this okay we're going to put them on each side of here like this and uh, then we're going to take a piece of metal drill two holes and then use these threads to pull this off and, I'll sh and hopefully that'll work and it should work now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to heat this up a little bit because there's if there's any bond mechanical bond like a, uh, a rust or corrosion that's between the shaft and the sleeve the expansion of the shaft will break that and i'm going to use my uh, the regular propane torch and we're just going to heat this up just a little bit and spin a little bit so that uh, we can expand it now we're only using 
and heating up the sleeve we don't want to heat the uh, the shaft just the sleeve okay you can see we got the two carriage bolts we just taped them up here because we want to hold them flush there's going to be no pressure going away from it it's only going to be drawing it this way so you can put anything you have to wrap it around wire you can use anything but you want one on each side 180 degrees from each other now we're going to take a piece of steel just scrap steel here and you can see i put two uh dots where i'm going to drill the holes right where the uh the bolts will come out they'll be a little bit oversized and uh we'll cut this off then and then we'll slip that over using two nuts to draw against this bolt and draw that out hopefully okay that here you it. see we just cut a, a quick piece of steel put two holes in it of course, you got to bevel the edges because, you know, you got OCD like that. Now, you're going to slide this on here like this. We have the nut backed off a little bit, but that's going to protect the threads. This is going to go on like this. Then we're going to put two washers on, okay? And then we're going to put the nuts on. Now, before we put the nuts on, we're going to put some lubricant. Anytime you're using threads uh that you're going to be using it for a force to pull something or anything you always lubricate the threads because that'll help everything go so we're going to lubricate the threads and where the nut goes against the washer and uh, get a deep socket and start trying to pull this off now here i'm using a 50 uh, 50 uh 50 percent automatic transmission fluid and 50 percent red grease Okay, you can see the setup here. We're all snugged up. You see what that looks like. Now, I'm using a Tom Gun Special SK breaker bar uh, with a uh, Craftsman socket here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to give a half a turn on each nut each way until hopefully we'll see this uh, start to pull off and you'll notice if this gap gets smaller. Okay, you can see the gap uh, widening in the back there, so it is working. I just backed off this uh, top nut to protect the threads. I'm just holding these two together with a channel lock, and I'm going to, uh, to you know, uh, continue with just giving a half a turn on each one, and you can see that it's uh, it, we did get movement, and we're going to just keep this up until, until this uh, pops off, and you'll see that it will come off we have very little resistance so it is coming off uh, but without this little jig I never would have got that off okay now we used our little device to get it off here you see we moved it off but it's still solid on there it's it probably pressed on or something so now what we're gonna do is we have to have something to push that bolt in there without damaging it and what I'm going to use is a smaller bolt, a hardened bolt here, pressed against the inside of here, pushing on the center of that bolt and until we can get this where it pops okay, off. Now you see the setup here. We want this pretty much centered in the middle of that bolt, that shaft, so we don't do any damage to that shaft. And it is, and now we'll, uh, we'll do the same thing again and pull it out straight out. Okay, so this worked out very well. You could see if you used any other method, you could really take a chance on screwing up these threads. These threads are pristine. There's, they're in great shape, and that's what we want because we're going to have to make that other pulley over here. Now, the reason that this shaft probably was so difficult to get the sleeve off the shaft is because it had a set screw. The set screw always deforms the shaft, and you can see here, you see the deformation of the shaft, so that's what made this difficult to come off and almost impossible, but without a gear puller, which I couldn't get on because of here, so you had to make your own, nothing beats a couple carriage bolts, right? Okay, last up, you remember last week we did this great little union box, well, a couple people pointed out that this little hinge here on this side was uh bent and i had uh, straightened it out i did not see it until uh, after because you know when the camera sometimes the camera picks up things that you don't pick up i was too too busy looking at the, you know trying to work on the finish i didn't realize that there was a slight bend in there but it's an aluminum hinge and very easy to straighten out so thanks for letting me know about that Okay, so we ordered up a couple of those wheels from uh, Amazon. They're only caster wheels. That's all it is, you know. It's a, but I just can't see spending fifty or sixty-five dollars for a caster wheel. That's just insanity to me, especially when I know I can make one. You know, you spend all this money on on lathes. You know, you might as well get some use out of them, right? So anyway, we'll get that done next week, and uh, I'll show you how that works. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, episode. 
I hope you have a great day. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye now.